The body of Christ is at a crossroad in need of clarity. And at a time like this, it is rather strange for a prominent leader, Bishop T.D. Jakes, concerning marriage, to say the following that is evolved and is evolving. Watch this clip. Yeah. And the LGBTs of wipes and swords have to find a household of worship that reflects what your views are and what you believe like anybody else. And find somebody who gets what you get about faith. And uh, trust me, I've talked to enough LGBT, they are not all the same. First of all, has your thinking evolved on this? It E evolved and evolved. E evolved and evolved. Evolved and evolved. Evolved and evolved. Evolved and evolved. Manhood and Christ likeness are synonymous. God holds the man accountable. He does not say by one woman sin entered into the world. He says by one man. So you can see that the statement by Ed Cole should resonate with every believer. Now, let me make it very clear. You, for you to transform society, you can't do it from the biblical point of view. You can't do it from the external. It has to come from within. How do you do that? You preach the gospel. Preaching the gospel reaches the heart, hearts of men and women, boys and girls. And those boys and girls, men and women, go into society and transform society. That's how society changes. Meaning that there has to be a heightened awareness in the body of Christ. And there has to be preaching of the gospel. I've noticed something in recent times that it almost seems as though the airwaves are void of the preaching of the gospel in the ways they were preached in the 90s. I'm sure many people can relate to that. And so when we see our society not even entertain what is the Christian perspective on issues, it means that we are in trouble. I'm going to refer again to Barner's study that says that uh, this is around 2019. It looked at a study from 20, the year 2000 to 2019, and what it discovered was that from the year 2000, about 45% professed to be practicing Christians, and by the year 2019, about only 25%. And imagine post-pandemic what those numbers would look like. That means that we're living in a post-Christian era. And what does that mean? That means that when policy positions are being made, they don't factor in the Christian's perspective. And we see it in our day and our age. And Ed Lewis Cole was a very, very resounding voice in the 90s. And what he said then, as relevant as they were then, they are more relevant today. There is an attack on manhood in our society. Almost like I'll use the terminology as gross as it might sound. It's like men are being neutered. They're not... Um, they're not encouraged to rise up and be the men that they are supposed to be. Instead, there is a, a feminization of, of man, and men are not uh, playing their roles and are not even encouraged to play their roles. In fact, if you look at how things are going, they throw out terminologies like toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity, as though a man's... Uh, design is too much for our society and that's the era of our times now interestingly enough i'm going to say make some statements that you might find kind of strange but one of the things that feminism did when it rose up in the late 60s into the early 70s is that it brought about an awareness that women have to be treated equally as men but then it departed from uh, balance and went into an excess. The excess is that there is no need for man. Uh, men are disposable. What a man can do, a woman can do also. Therefore, I don't need a man. And then family structures started being fractured. Things started breaking apart. 
and we are living in the consequence because every cause has an effect. We are experiencing the effects of a cause called feminism back in the day. But it's interesting, back in the day, they, the, the, the argument was to make, women under, uh, make society understand that men and women are equal. But today, we are experiencing a totally different problem. The problem we face today is we are seeing a society that wants to redefine things. For instance, in the arena of women's sports, you have men now who identify as women playing in sports that are designed for women. And curiously, you don't hear an uproar, an upcry, a cry out from the feminist movements, from the women's associations to push back on this change. So now it, it went from being equal to now your very sports that identifies who you are being invaded by men and men who would rather identify as women. And even the transgender um, agenda is on the rise. It's interesting that when you go into the school system, you see that they are really in the position where they are really going after the young people. In some cases, without parental consent. Some parents don't even know that their children are being uh, encouraged to identify with a gender other than the one they were born with. Now, we can improve upon what the Word of God says. And this message really is for the believer. It's for the believer. Because if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to have a problem with the Bible. So this message is for the believer. And when the believer is empowered with the message of the gospel and what the Bible says, it now becomes their duty to preach the gospel, win souls, make disciples who would now think as the word prescribes for us to think. Now look at this uh, passage in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So God is very, very precise, very, very clear. In the image of God, he created him, male and female created he them. So if we are believers, we ascribe to what the Bible says. And God does not make any mistakes. And let me be very clear that anyone who struggles with identifying with their uh, gender from birth, I have compassion for you. I feel for you and I'm praying for you to find comfort in God's love. Remember to like, subscribe, and click on the bell so you will never miss any episode from our channel. God bless you.